You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is a case of Arbogast versus Vess. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Ms. Arbogast, you are in court today claiming the defendant started denying your two-year-old daughter, Kinsley, once he got into a relationship with your former friend. Yes, You Your claim Honor. the defendant has ignored the needs of your children, so you are suing for the maximum amount of $5,000 for child care expenses. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Vest, you are here to testify the plaintiff's promiscuous behavior is the reason you believe you are not Kinsley's father, and until proven otherwise, you refuse to financially support her. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Ms. Abergas, has the defendant helped at all financially? If you say $100 over two years helping, then... I mean, if that's in his eyes, yeah. $100 over two years? No, he hasn't really helped at all. You haven't been helping at all, Mr. Vess? Uh, no, because how can I take care of somebody's uh, daughter that may or may not be mine? Okay, well, just because you don't want to take care of our daughter, we still have a three-year-old son that you haven't helped for either. So you have another baby, too? Yes. And there's no question as to the paternity of that child? No, Your Honor. But no. do you help financially with that child? I have in the past, but recently, no, I have not. You, you have not helped in the past. Not at all. You've helped $100 per both kids in two years. Two years. So if you don't have doubts about the older child, why are you not at least providing for that child? I have been providing for that child. But when? recently I have been having bills and everything else that, you know... How much money do you say you've contributed to Kinsley? Kinsley, probably $100. Okay, so she's right. No, yes. he no, he has he's claimed a hundred dollars for Cameron and Kinsley. A hundred for Kinsley. I've spent a heck of a lot more on Cameron than that. No, you haven't. Actually, <laughs> you have no say in this. You don't know me and you barely know her. Oh, he barely knows me. I dated him for a year and a half in middle school, and I'm sorry when okay, you. Okay, but he in doesn't know door, me. When he you has no in right to say door anything. Two months ago, and our three-year-old son looks up at you and says, "Who are you?" Oh, and then he turns around and says, oh, yeah, that's that right, your you're fault. my father. No, that's it's... not my fault. You've been the absentee of his life. Yeah, and all... Let me... Hold on, let me understand this. And Mr. Fritz is your current boyfriend. Yes, Your Honor. And you say so he's the person helping you raise... Yes. Mr. Vess's children. Yes. He's the one who they wake up to every morning. He's the one who takes them out, does things with them, plays football with them. He does the father role, not Mr. Vess. You've taken an active role in the children's life. Yes, Your Honor. How many times have you witnessed Mr. Vess support, financially support his children? One time, since I've been in their lives for the last seven months, and that was $20 for pull-ups and diapers. So you've developed a bond with the children? Yes, I have. And Kinsley's two? Yes. That's about the time they start saying, Dad, Dad? Yes, Your Honor. So... He, she has... She knows no other man as dad besides him because he has refused to claim her. But he's the one who signed the birth certificate but in the, the hospital. you're the one that makes he did not all your other boyfriends not, call, you know, He did not dad decide to disown her until he left me to get with her and then all of a sudden, oh, that's not my baby. So, wait a minute. Take me back. You were in a relationship. Yes. We got in a relationship in 2012. We got pregnant with our firstborn in November. We had him in August of 2013. We... Uh, I don't know if you older people do it, but us young people, we go at it like rabbits. Um, so, you older people... Obviously, <laughs> he wanted... Jerome, is that us? <laughs> That's anybody older than not me. Not me. <laughs> I'm not old. <laughs> Shoot! So, um, he obviously wanted it a lot, so we gave, I gave it. Our date of conception was between August 11th and August 13th. Then he told me I couldn't be friends with somebody I had been friends with for nine years. He told me if that's the... If you to go have sex with him, that's the only way to break your emotional connection. And I have witnesses, plenty of witnesses, who can attest to him saying this and have heard him say it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You say Mr. Vest told you... Yes. The only way to break the connection you had with this friend. Told but he says you need to up. go have sex with him. Yeah, to break the emotional and physical 
bond of friendship that I had with this man. But when then he what? decided, but but the whole pregnancy. Who gave you this advice, Mr. Vest? Where'd you come up with this? No, I never said that. That uh, that never came out of my. Yo, mouth. yes, it did. So listen, August sex with Mr. Vest. Yes. Then he tells you to sleep with the other friend. I did not have sex with this other man until August 29th. And our conception date was a lot, August 11th to the 13th, in between them days. So wait, how did this happen then? You, 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 you just go up to this guy and say, my boyfriend says we should have sex. It was late at night. He came and got me. We went to the lake and... Well, we went to the gas station, bought condoms, went to the lake, did our deal, and I went back home and got in bed with him. Took, well, took a shower and then got in bed. And he was all good. You say she's making this up? Yeah, I do. We were arguing about something, I don't know exactly what. I got mad, so, and I told her that she should go and, you know, be with somebody else if she wanted to be. I guess she took me serious. When did you find out about him? After we broke up. We knew that same night. I was at the lake, he was texting me the whole time, baby, when are you coming home? What time are you gonna be here? When I get done having sex with the person (laughs) you told me to go have sex with. He doesn't be making sense. He knew about it. That's the thing. He says he didn't know. He knew about it. You do admit to having sex with this other guy. Yeah. Did you use protection? You yeah. said you guys stopped to get condoms. Yes. So you used protection with the other guy. Yeah. But I was, and I was already pregnant at the time I had sex with this other man. He's sitting on the couch in the hospital holding her after she's born. He held her before I held her. Yeah, I thought she then, was my daughter until you told me that she wasn't. I never once told you it was she on wasn't speaker your daughter. Phone. What did she say, Mr. Vess? We were on speakerphone and she blurted out that Kinsley may not be mine. Ms. Glover, I'd like to know if you know anything about when Mr. Vess found out that Kinsley may not be his biological daughter. I don't know if it was out of anger or what, but yes, she has. She did say it shortly after they broke up that Kinsley was possibly not his. How old was Kinsley at this point? At the time of our like, split up, she was two months. She was just shy of being two months old. Did you ever tell him that she wasn't his? No, I never once told him. If I, if that wasn't his baby, and I knew that wasn't his baby, why would I let him sign the birth certificate in the hospital? So you signed the birth certificate, Mr. Vest. Yes, Your Honor, because I thought it was mine. I thought she was mine. I wanted him to also be a father to our son. When our three-year-old son looked at him and said, "Who are you?" My heart shattered. Okay, that hurts. That's our three-year-old. But yeah, he can be a father to her kids I'd and their new baby. I'd be a father to my baby. son if I actually had a chance to see him. If you didn't you have a damn... You would see him if you were a constant role in his life. I'm not going to just let you take our son when you haven't been around because that is not comfortable with me. He knows me. He knows my boyfriend. He knows my family. Yeah, for how long? He doesn't know you. And Mr. So, Vest, you're just jealous because you got replaced as a boyfriend and as a and father. And you will too. Oh, in no, In a matter of won't. time, you will be replaced. Oh, no, we Three won't. Three boyfriends... And how many two. years? I've had two Three. until him. We have been asking for a DNA test since the time she told us that Kensley was possibly not his. No. I heard it firsthand. He was sitting in my house along with other people. And that's when he was on the speakerphone? Yes. And what were her words exactly? Kensley is possibly not even yours, is what she said. He automatically hung up the phone and walked out of the room in tears. You say it's pathetic that you still don't want to grow up and claim your daughter. Mr. Vest responds, I would claim that thing if I knew she was mine. A thing? Okay, but you want to see my son, but yet you want me to sign my rights away to him. No, you're the one that said you was going to sign your rights away. No, I never once said that. I would never say that. Yes, you did. In the case of Arbogast versus Vest, it has been determined by this court. Yeah, I thought she was my daughter until you told me that she wasn't. I never once told you she wasn't your daughter. I never once told you she was not your daughter. I never, ever, ever have told him that Kinsley is not his. I have been begging for a paternity test. I even asked him to go and buy one of those $35 kits off the shelf DNA paternity tests that you do at home and then you send it to a lab. Oh, I don't have the money for that. Okay, but if you're the one begging for it, why didn't you go and get it yourself? Because you're the one who denies her. Okay, so you should I've pay been, for I it. I have been asking. Oh, you have? Yeah, I've been asking for a mm-hmm. while for a okay. paternity test. 
No, you haven't. I have been begging you to be around and you say, here, here, I have this text message right here that says I would claim that thing if I knew she was mine. So you've been asking for the paternity test? No. What I've do you have there, Miss Arbogast? I have text messages of him. Let me the see that. Disrespectful things he said. I also have proof of all the non-finances that he has not helped with that I have spent to put a roof over their head, bills paid, clothes so on their back. So these are text messages between you and Mr. Vest. Mm-hmm. You say it's pathetic that you still don't want to grow up and claim your daughter that you signed the birth certificate for. Mr. Vest responds, I would claim that thing if I knew she was mine. Miss Arbogast says, oh, so now she's just a thing. A thing? That could potentially be your daughter. I, I shouldn't have said it. I was angry. And yeah, I regret saying that. I do. No matter if you claim Kinsley or not, our son still don't know you. How's that make you feel? He has no idea who you are. They would know you haven't been around. If you would allow me to see him. I'm not going to just let you have him when I don't know who you're going to have him around and you haven't been around, so I'm not going to just let him up and go with you. But yet you want me to sign my rights away to him. No, I you're know. the one that said you was going to sign your rights no, away. No, I never once said yes, that. I'm yes, not going to sign my rights away to my own son. I would never say that. Yes, you did. And you said it about Kinsley. If she wasn't yours, you were going to sign your rights away. Yeah, if she's not mine, I'm going to sign my rights away. And then away. now all of a sudden you want to change your story and say you're not going to sign your rights away if she is yours. These two years are the most important years of bonding that you can get with her, and you haven't been there. She knows him as dad. She don't know you at all. She looks at you like you're a complete stranger. So these were pictures that were submitted to the court. You believe... Mr. Vest, that you see a resemblance with Cameron, but not with Kinsley. Yeah, I see the resemblance between Cameron and Kinsley because, yeah, they're, they're siblings. But do you have a resemblance but with Cameron? But I don't see a resemblance to myself and Kinsley. You do not? No. Ms. Arbogast, do you have any doubt whatsoever? I don't have any doubt that she's not his. Because let's be honest, I mean, the window of time with which you slept with Mr. Vest and then the other guys, just about two weeks... You say you use and protection, but we know that's not 100% guaranteed. Do you have any doubt at all? I think in my heart, in my stomach, that I think that that is his baby. Think or no? It's two I different know, things. I know. I know that she is his just by looking at that face. And but even... you understand that I've got two people here now that say they heard you tell him this is not his biological child. I've never once told him that that was not his baby. Never. Why would I let a man sign a birth certificate to a baby if I'm going to turn around later and say, that's not your baby? That makes no sense. But why would you go sleep with another man at the to direction of one man... To make him happy. Yeah, you're sleeping with another if man. That, with how how in happy. the world is that going to make him happy because to potentially make a child with another because man? Because he's the one who told me to go do it, and we use protection. This logic is faulty. We had a lot of faulty logic today, Jerome. I thought I heard Just it all. faulty. The only reason that I want to have these answers is because that little girl right there deserves to know who her biological father is. He says he's a father by DNA, but acting as one, he's absent. And that must hurt you somewhat. It does. It breaks my heart every day. You, you don't ever want to think somebody is neglecting your child. No. That, that doesn't feel good at all. When our son called him, actually, in November of last year, and Mr. Fritz was standing right there when it happened, called him on his birthday to tell him happy birthday, Bubby asked Sissy, he said, Sissy, you want to talk to Daddy? He straight told our three-year-old, that's not my daughter. Mr. Vess, I know you aren't talking about paternity issues in front of three-year-olds. No, I'm not. So you're yes, saying you that did. never no, happened? y'all just want to make me the bad person because I'm the one standing here, you know, wondering if that's my daughter or not. I was standing right next to her. I don't care if you were standing right there. You, you are in bed with her, so yeah, you're going to say what she wants to say. You told our three-year-old son, that's not my daughter. And I said, what am I supposed to tell him? And you said, well, you can explain it to him when he's older. Just Do you because, have any witnesses just that are mutual? Because I sleep in the same bed as her doesn't mean I'm going to agree with everything she says. Yeah, right. Okay. So listen, 
I can see this is going to keep going on until we get the results. And I have those results for you. Jerome. There you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics. And they read as follows. Even when there was a paternity question related to Kinsley, there was not one related to Cameron. And you still weren't showing up for him. That's got to stop now. It really does. Everything is connected to not just the mother, but to the father as well. These two years are the most important years of bonding that you can get with her, and you haven't been there. She looks at you like you're a complete stranger. Y'all just want to make me the bad person because I'm the one wondering if that's my daughter or not. In the case of Arbogast versus Vess, when it comes to two-year-old Kinsley Vess, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Vess, you are the father. I see. <laughs> this situation's got to change. You guys are gonna have to figure out how to end this war because Kinsley's losing. Mm-hmm. Ms. Arbogas, yes, for two Honor. years, you've taken care of this child by yourself. Yes, Your You Honor. presented expenses for $5,000 even. And they are all expenses that you need to raise a child. My ruling is for the plaintiff for $5,000. <laughs> Mr. Vest, you have to reclaim your place as their father in their lives. And even when there was a paternity question related to Kinsley, there was not one related to Cameron. And you still weren't showing up for him. That's got to stop now. And Kinsley needs to see you. She needs to grow up what, knowing what it means to be loved by her father because that's going to affect the way she operates in her life. Everything is connected to not just the mother, but to the father as well. So we have counseling and resources for you. I want you all to talk to Dr. Jeff. I want you to figure out how to take the first step towards co-parenting in a healthy way. I wish you all the very best of luck. Court is adjourned.